Did you know these surprising facts about Charlie Chaplin, the man who made the world laugh without uttering a single word? It's time to turn the pages back to the late 19th century, to the heart of London. Born in the year 1889, Chaplin was the son of music hall entertainers. A life on stage was all he knew from the start, but it wasn't always an easy one. His first taste of the spotlight came unexpectedly when his mother's voice failed abruptly during a performance. Young Chaplin was pushed on stage to entertain the crowd, and oh boy, did he deliver. But it wasn't all laughter and applause. Chaplin's journey was marked by financial struggles and familial hardships. His father was absent, and his mother, despite her best efforts, couldn't always put food on the table. The world of entertainment became a refuge for young Chaplin, a place where he could escape the harsh realities of his life. It was also a school where he learned the art of making people laugh, of transforming personal pain into universal joy. These early experiences shaped Chaplin, honed his skills, and prepared him for the challenges that lay ahead. They taught him that humor could be a powerful tool, a way to connect with people, to make them forget their worries, if only for a while. It was these experiences, these lessons, that would later inspire his iconic character, the Little Tramp. The Tramp, with his toothbrush mustache, bowler hat, and funny walk, would bring laughter to millions, transcending borders and language barriers. So, the stage was set for our young Chaplin to step into the world of entertainment, little knowing he would one day be a worldwide sensation. Ever wondered how the iconic character of the Little Tramp was born? Let's dive into the creation of one of the most enduring symbols of the silent film era. Chaplin's Little Tramp, a character as timeless as cinema itself, was a masterstroke of creativity born out of necessity. The Little Tramp was not just a character, he was a symbol of the common man struggling to survive in an industrialized world. He was the embodiment of resilience, hope, and the indomitable human spirit. The birth of the Little Tramp was a turning point in Chaplin's career. The character first appeared in Chaplin's second film with Keystone Studios, Kid Auto Races at Venice in 1914. With his baggy pants, oversized shoes, tight coat, toothbrush mustache, and a cane that he wielded more like a wand than a walking aid, the little tramp was an instant hit. The character was a stark contrast to the refined high society roles that were prevalent in films of the era. The little tramp's success was not just due to Chaplin's comedic genius. It was also a testament to his understanding of the human condition. Despite his constant battles with adversity, the little tramp rarely lost his dignity or his optimism. He was a beacon of hope and resilience in a world that often seemed harsh and unforgiving. This character, who so embodied the everyday man and his struggles, resonated deeply with audiences, catapulting Chaplin to unprecedented heights of fame. In the era of silent films, the visual was paramount. The little tramp, with his distinctive attire and expressive physical comedy, was a visual feast. The character's silent eloquence spoke volumes, connecting with audiences in a way that transcended language and culture. The little tramp, in all his silent glory, was a testament to Chaplin's genius. He showed the world that comedy could be poignant, that silence could speak louder than words, and that a character could be so much more than a collection of traits. And thus, the little tramp, with his baggy pants, toothbrush, mustache, and cane, walked into the hearts of millions. Chaplin was a master of silent films, but did you know he was initially reluctant to embrace the sound technology? Indeed, Charlie Chaplin, the king of silent films, the man who could make the world laugh without uttering a single word, had reservations about the advent of sound in cinema. It was a new era, a new way for storytelling, and for many it was an exciting innovation. But for Chaplin, it was a challenge, a challenge that threatened to upend his entire craft. Chaplin once said, I was determined to continue making silent films. I considered dialogue a weakening element. He felt that the magic of his character, the little tramp, lay in his silent antics. He feared that the introduction of sound would strip away the charm, the universality that his character held. However, as he observed the world around him, he realized the potential of sound. He saw it as a tool, 
a new medium through which he could express his ideas more powerfully. And so he decided to take the leap to step into the unknown. The result was The Great Dictator. The Great Dictator marked Chaplin's transition from silent films to talkies. It was a bold move, a satirical comedy where he played both a Jewish barber and a fascist dictator, a clear parody of Adolf Hitler. The film was a gamble. It was his first full sound production, his first political satire, and it was released when the United States was still at peace with Nazi Germany. Despite his initial reluctance, The Great Dictator was a resounding success. It received five Academy Award nominations and was a commercial hit. The film's success demonstrated that Chaplin's genius was not confined to silent films. He had successfully embraced sound and used it to deliver one of the most powerful performances of his career. The film's climactic speech, where Chaplin's Jewish barber character impersonates the dictator, is hailed as one of the greatest speeches in cinematic history. It showcased the power of sound, the power of words, and it was Chaplin's way of speaking to the world, a world on the brink of war. In the end, not only did he embrace the sound, but he used it to create one of the most memorable performances of his career. Behind the laughter, Chaplin's personal life was a roller coaster of emotions. As bright as his star shone on the silver screen, the shadows cast in his private life were equally as deep. Chaplin, a man known for his humor and charisma, found himself in a sequence of marriages. Each union, filled with its own unique joys and sorrows, added a new chapter to his complex life story. His first three marriages were turbulent, filled with highs and lows that mirrored the slapstick comedy he was famous for. However, it was his fourth and final marriage to Una O'Neill, a woman almost 40 years his junior, that proved to be his sanctuary. Their union was a testament to love's endurance, lasting until his death and producing eight children. It was with Una that Chaplin found a sense of stability and peace that had eluded him in his earlier years. But just as Chaplin found solace in his personal life, the professional world around him began to spin off kilter. His political views, which leaned towards the left, stirred controversy in the United States during the height of the Cold War. Accused of having communist sympathies, he found himself at odds with the U.S. government. The situation escalated to such an extent that after a trip abroad, he was denied re-entry to the United States. In response, Chaplin made the difficult decision to relocate to Switzerland, a country known for its neutrality. He spent the last decades of his life there, far from the Hollywood glamour that had once embraced him. In the quiet Swiss countryside, he found a refuge from the political storm that had uprooted him. Despite the turbulence in his personal life, Chaplin never let his on-screen persona falter, making the world laugh one film at a time. Charlie Chaplin's legacy continues to live on, but did you know it was once marred by a bizarre incident? Indeed, in a twist as strange as any plot from his films, Chaplin's rest was disturbed when his coffin was stolen from its grave, a mere three months after his passing. The thieves demanded a large ransom, but their plot was foiled by the Swiss police, and Chaplin was returned to his final resting place. This peculiar event, however, did nothing to diminish the enduring influence of Chaplin's work. Speaking of influence, Chaplin's legacy in the realm of cinema and comedy is nothing short of monumental. He was one of the pioneers of the film industry, making a name for himself during the silent film era a time when actors had to rely solely on their physical abilities to convey the story. His iconic character, the Little Tramp, has become a symbol of comedy and resilience, a character born in hardship, yet always finding a reason to smile. Chaplin's genius lay not just in his comedic timing, but also in his ability to inject his films with social commentary, making audiences laugh while also making them think. His film, The Great Dictator, is a testament to this a bold satire that criticized fascism at a time when the world was on the brink of war. Despite the controversies and personal struggles, Chaplin's star never dimmed. His films continue to be studied and celebrated, his style of comedy emulated and admired. His influence can be seen in the work of numerous comedians and filmmakers, a testament to his enduring appeal. And so, the legacy of Charlie Chaplin lives on, not just in his films, but in the laughter and joy they continue to bring. 
His life, marked by challenges and triumphs, is a testament to the transformative power of art and humor. From the streets of London to the heart of Hollywood, Chaplin's journey was nothing short of extraordinary. His legacy continues to inspire and entertain, reminding us all of the transformative power of laughter.